Would somebody say, uh, if I say to them, well, you know, um, there's a tornado possibly coming uh, this week or there's a hurricane on the way, uh, we wouldn't say that they have a hurricane it's, disorder. That's <laughs> <laughs> no, you've got, but you've, you've got facts to back that up. And yeah. part of what you're saying here is the media is not perhaps allowing that yeah, there are there, true factual things uh, happening in the world. Yeah, I, I mean, there's sort of a mockery that I see going on in some mm. of these articles. But mockery, you know, is one of the stages of denial. denial. That's one of the ways that we sure. can make, you know, first we deny it that it exists, and then we make fun of it, and then we discover, then we discover it and claim it as our own. So, I mean, this is Peak Moment. We are living at a peak of human innovation, information, wealth, and health. But we're also at a peak of population and consumption, with rising temperatures and declining resources fueled by cheap oil and gas. Peak Moment Television, bringing you examples of positive responses to energy decline and climate change through local community action. Hi, welcome to Peak Moment. I'm Jenea Donaldson. We're taping today in the Nevada City Co-Housing Community Room. And in the background, you may be hearing dinner being made. Enjoy it. <laughs> My guest today is Sarah Edwards, who's an ecotherapist and an author. We're going to talk about some interesting side effects of what's going on around us right now. Thanks for joining me. It's good to be here. Earlier this year, you really intrigued me when you put out an article that you and Linda Bazell wrote called the waking up syndrome right. and and just those words it's really a compelling title what is the waking up syndrome well the waking up syndrome is something that linda and i observed a series of stages that people go through in the process of coming to grips uh, with the implications of all of the climate change that's happening, okay. uh, what's happening in terms of peak oil and, and resource depletion in general and even in addition all of the kinds of implications it has for our own economy, for their personal lives, for so, the way we live, for our lifestyle, and really grasping uh, the scope of what we're dealing with here. I, I think that's part of what I say. For people who are watching Peak Moment, there's varying levels of awareness about and acceptance about climate change, we're running out of resources, overpopulation concerns, Concerns about collapse, you know, services that are not being there that have been, we expect, and, and so on. And that they're all tied together, which uh, is something that economy. we're not quite uh, always aware of. You know, we, we might be worrying about the economy here, and somebody else might be worrying about the polar bears here, and not, and, you know, not fully grasping that what's happening in the economy, and what's happening with the oil, and, what's hap and the gas prices, and what's happening to the polar bears is all one big thing. Right. And that's what it's so difficult for us to get our minds around. And, you know, we've noticed that you go through these various stages of, of really coming to grips with what that means. I, the range of attitudes range everywhere from I don't want to hear it, I want to get out with my life, to the sky is falling and it will be falling tomorrow and I need to get my guns and my, my food and ammunition to be prepared. I mean, it's like it, I see the whole gamut of, of responses to this. And what, what, what you're talking about in the waking up syndrome is that there's some understandable stages yeah. you might go through. Yeah, it's a through. process of different stages. What, what might those look like? Well, and do we all go through them in the same order? Or? Not necessarily, um, but generally speaking, uh, the first stage is just sort of denial. And it depends on where people come in to this. It, I have to admit, it's far harder today than even when we wrote this in January uh, to get into a state of denial because it's on TV all the time, it's in the movies, it's everywhere we are. Uh, but there's still many people who think this isn't real. Uh, you know, that, that just some people think this, that these problems are, are going to go away. That this or is that just a cycle? It's just a cycle uh -huh. that will repeat or technolo you know, technology, something is going. It, it's really just um, people who are chicken littles running around. Uh, and so it's harder to be there, but still th there's people that deny it, ex it exists. There's also people that deny that it's significant. They go, well, yeah, it's happening, but it's a natural process and it's nothing we should need to concern ourselves with. Or they might even think, well, it's something or other, but uh, there's nothing I I can do about it, so I'm just going to go on with life. So that's the first stage. Um, the second stage is a sense of anxiety, of some, some sort of semi-consciousness that starts to come over us, where we start going, 
you know, there just may be more to this than, than mm -hmm. I've been thinking, and there's something not quite right. And it may be occurring because of their own financial situation, or it may be becoming uh, the fact that they've been through a Katrina or a flood, or they're in the midst of a drought, or some of the big climate changes that are happening. Or they may be just noticing more news about it. Yeah, them. and they're seeing I all mean, this news. The hundred year flood in the Midwest, yeah. or England, or our wildfires in California. Exactly, and so then they, so they, there's sort of this sense of, of semi-conscious discomfort mm -hmm. that there's something not quite right. And people do different things in that stage. Uh, sometimes this is where we also see, we see eco-anxiety starting to emerge, just feeling sort of anxious about all this green stuff and why is everybody supposed to be green and, and also eco-anger, uh, people actually being angry about the fact that they're expected to recycle and that people will comment on them, oh, well, you're throwing that away. Uh, or if they're, ah. their relatives are saying to them, you know, you're not, uh, uh, you're driving your Hummer still, you know, and, and uh, we were just interviewed not too long ago by the Kansas City Star, and the reporter told us that there is not a day that goes by now that the Star doesn't get some letter to the editor angry and complaining about the fact that people expect them to recycle or expect them to drive a more energy efficient car, and, there, and then there's also a rebellion in some of these letters, like, I'm going to just drive whatever car I want and use as much gas as I want. So the semi-conscious state sort of sends people into a state of, of either uh, anxiety or really just being frustrated with all these people bothering them with something. It seems to me that reaction is very similar to just normal human reactions. You, you, you know, you, something's going wrong and you want to blame somebody, you want to, you know, you want to push it away from yourself, that, that pushing it off to the, the amorphous environment here or the economy or somebody else is going to be a natural next step as it's starting to dawn on you that something's not right here. And you're not quite necessarily sure how it fits in or what's wrong. Uh, and then stage three is um, the moment of awakening. And, and that is like suddenly, maybe you, it's a movie that you see, you know, like The Inconvenient Truth or uh, uh, The End of Suburbia, or maybe it's a long, deep conversation that you will have with a friend or something you see on TV, or maybe it's living through one of those things and you yeah. see the effect of the, the devastating floods in the Midwest on your own home and in your own community, and it starts to, you know, it flashes. It flashes into your head at that moment like, oh my gosh, this isn't good. <laughs> and you know that's a can be a, a a startling thing, or it can also be. Uh, it's interesting how people respond to that. I know for myself and a lot of people, when I first saw the end of suburbia, I thought, well, first of all, it made so much sense. It was yes. finally said, yes. oh, yes. there was a relief in a sense because yes. I thought, yes. oh. And now I understand how all of these things tied together that that I, I knew were somehow just not right. We had all these pieces that I were felt disconnected. The same and like you know, I'm interested in the environment. I'm an eco psychologist. I'm, but you know, the, something's happening with the economy, and uh, how does this all tie in? And uh, so when when it clicks, uh, there's a moment of awakening. Uh, it can be exciting or it can be scary, uh, and there can also be. I know for me, there was sort of a, a honeymoon period, a crisis honeymoon, where you go. Oh wow! Now I know. Oh, we, if we just do this, if we all get Priuses, or if we just do, if we get green, or if we do this, oh wow, we'll be okay. Aha! <laughs> uh -huh. So your first, your first direction was, here's how we can solve it all. And all right, and I it. got busy trying to change, uh, to re change our footprint and and change the way we energized our house, you know, and cut everything back. And and then you know the fourth stage is the point of no return when you really realize that. This isn't necessarily fun, and it's not going. This isn't something that's just going to go away. Uh, this is something significant, and at that moment, at stage four, uh, you can either just give up uh, and, and go back into your denial, and just say, "You know, I can't deal with this," uh, or you can say, "Wow." it's hitting the fan and I'm going to have to learn everything that I can. And some people just almost become obsessed with reading all of the books, going to all of the movies, getting all the DVDs, just learning everything they possibly can. And one of the difficulties about hitting this stage is that the sense of isolation that they may feel because their, yes. their relatives and friends may think they're a little bit nuts. And yet here they are really trying to go with something that, that they feel is probably the most important thing that's going on in the world today. There, I mean, <laughs> this is something that humans haven't had to deal with. I mean, this scale, this magnitude, and this many ecological changes that could affect, what, our survival as this species, or what the quality of life will be down the road. We're not, we're not wired to think that far down the road. Right. I, think that, yeah, I think that for right. me, th having, bring all those pieces together, like in the movie, What a Way to Go, yeah. Life at the End of Empire, all those pieces, um, 
I expect that our responses will depend on our own personality. Right, because and this stage is really a, a choice point. Am I going to am I going to take a look at what's really happening and go down this road of dealing with all of this stuff, which is not necessarily mm. pretty at all, mm. uh, but doesn't have to be catastrophic? Maybe I don't know, or whether I'm just going to go. I I can't cope with all this and go back into you know kind of recycle and, into the and denial. And it's sort of like the 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 Titanic. <laughs> are you going to go start to haul the lifeboats out and, and Are you going to so keep on? dancing? Are you going to keep dancing? That's right. And I've had right. friends that have done both who've who've gotten very well informed have gone both directions. Yeah, and I think people I also why. recycle through this and they go dance for a while and they go, you know what, I think I better not be dancing right now. I think you need to be starting to think about this. And well, when I first got the word on peak oil, my first response was, holy smokes, we are not ready for this to happen so quickly. We are so dependent on oil. Right. Um, and then my next thought was, but surely somebody's, somebody's got a solution. <laughs> right. I mean, surely There's out there somewhere. The corporations who need to be making money are factoring this in, and we're planning on it. And when I spoke with Richard Heinberg, and he said, they're, they're not. not. <laughs> and the financial investors are not clued in. And our local governments whole. are, for the most not. part, not addressing this. You know, so uh, you know that's the point of no return. And then the fifth stage is really usually accompanied by some degree of, of hopelessness, despair, feeling powerlessness, uh, and also sometimes guilt of, of realizing that it's we human beings uh, that are contributing to, in whatever degree we want to fully accept or, you know, is true, uh, to what's going on. And that we've sort of been handed um, and have made a mess. Uh, yes, some of this may be in natural cycles, but obviously pretty much everyone is now agreeing that, that the human uh, society is now constituted in the Western world has contributed to this and is playing well, a big role. So there's guilt, there's sorrow, there's despair, th there's you know, a sense of powerlessness. What can I possibly do exactly. uh, about all of this? And that's the, the most difficult stage that we need to get through, and we really need to get through it because we have to be able to move into some type of action, which is, uh, you know, and as soon as we can fully accept our powerlessness in this situation, I think then we're ready to start looking at what it is we can do. That sounds very much like the 12th step. It does, doesn't, doesn't it? it? Yeah. The first it, step. And I am in a powerless. way, it's not. It's, 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 in a way, it's, it's, it's uh, not at all different because uh, the 12 steps is about addiction. Yes. And out of our awareness, I really don't think that people think of themselves, you know, alcoholics generally know that they're drinking, but people who use oil generally, or lots of, or throw things away and vast and spend money and so forth that contribute to this, they don't generally think that they're addicted to anything. But it is a sense of, of addiction. Our whole culture is addicted uh, to uh, resources that are, uh, and to living beyond uh, what's really sustainable on our planet. Well, I mean, if, so, if George W. Bush is going to say we're addicted to oil, if he's You know we're addicted, addicted to, it, to oil. <laughs> there's going to be truth in this. Yeah, so and it is. It, sort it of just doesn't that. Look, it, look at because it's invisible. It's in the clothes you wear and the food you eat right. and everywhere and, you live. And, you, so and you who knows that? I mean, that. people don't actually realize that most of our food is Connect made with the petroleum. The I want to go back to the stage before because I think oh, okay. that stage of feeling, before we can get to acceptance, yeah. I mean, we're going to be back in that stage of feeling helpless, uh, hopeless, uh, powerless. It's like the magnitude, for me, it's the magnitude, magnitude, depression, the scale of things, how many people's lives, everything that has to, to change and respond to this. It's like, it's too big, you know. And I know, for example, when we read Revenge of Gaia with James Lovelock about uh -huh. the Earth, the climate picture from an independent scientist, I, mean, I was very depressed, you know, off and on for months. I don't think anybody that's... Uh awake that has wakened <laughs> hasn't gone through depression I, I know I when I finally realized that it wasn't going to be oh well if we all just do this when I finally accepted how huge it is and that we it, it, there really w will be a lot of change and possibly a lot of suffering yes. for a lot of people yes. because transitions this huge just um, people, we're, we're all kind of set in our ways we're used to a certain kind of lifestyle we're used to the way we're living uh, and it, it can be it can be quite depressing, and most people go through that stage, and we have to get through it. But the, but getting through it means not running back to oh, it's all fine. But really, just sitting and processing our feelings, hopefully finding other people on the internet, in our communities, uh, realizing that there are others who also are awake, who are also uh, have been through these stages and are going through the stages themselves. And almost everyone I know also recycles that feeling. 
They recycle you stage go back, five. You go back to, uh, you yes, know, you're, you're working yes. on things. I know like when we started yes. to uh, deal with our um, own energy situation and how our propane was, our propane bills were going sky high and we knew not only for the environment but for our own survival, we had to change that. It took us three years, mm. three years to get our energy situation more or less because we live in an older house. You know, not everybody uh, can just suddenly go out and build an energy efficient home and, and buy an energy efficient. Can't. Most people can't. I mean, most of what we are going to be having to do is to retrofit what we have and where we are. As the best we can. And, right. you know, so when we get into trying to do it, sometimes we can, and, and also getting involved with our communities because we need to be doing this with other people. And sometimes we can get discouraged about, well, other people are not getting it. I can't seem to get people uh, to mobilize around the things we need to do where we live. So then we can kind of recycle back into that, that stage of, of despair mm -hmm. and depression. But, uh, you know, if we stick with it and just go through the process, I think as human beings we always come back because we are a really resilient species. That's true. I mean, we're so resilient. And we know <laughs> how to adapt. Yeah. That's what our human history is full of, of adapting to the next set of conditions. And we're going to need to. Here. Yeah. We have to adapt. We're all here. descendants of survivors, or we wouldn't be here. Oh, <laughs> so. That's a very heartening part of the story. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it is. It is really. You know, so, you know, as long as you stay with that process, you're just going to keep coming back to the, well, what can I do? And, the, the, and that's the key is we have to turn our anxiety and our, uh, well, in, of course, in any kind of classic depression, what do you have to you do with it? You have to move into action. Uh -huh. If you just stay in the state of, of depression, it's it just goes down. down. Right. If you stay in a state of anxiety, you just go in circles. But it has to be moved forward. All that energy has to move forward into something that we can do uh, in our own lives. First of all, uh, not exacerbate the problem. Take okay. steps that we can do that no, we're not going to prevent these things probably personally. We can't. Sure, but sure. there are things that we can do to keep from making it worse. And we can decide which ones those are. You know, people feel like, oh, well, I don't want to... Uh, I don't, I don't want to give up my Hummer. Well, don't start there. Start with something that fits for you. Like, you know, would you like to recycle? Would you like to participate in doing something uh, for some of the species that are disappearing? You know, start somewhere mm -hmm. uh, to do okay. something to not make the situation as uh, any worse than it is. And then start looking at our own lives and, and thinking about, well, what can I do to reduce my energy footprint and, or my consumption? Yes. Uh, how yes. can I simplify my own life? Because not will this be good only for the planet, but it's going to be good for us. Well. We and, need to be doing it for protection. And we all have protection. to start with that self-interest. I mean, that's the first place right. we're going to begin anyway. Right. I mean, people mm -hmm. ask, what, sh where should, what, sh what should I do? And, and, and some of the advice is, find what you care about. Find your, your, you know, where your interest in energy yeah. is. Start a little garden. If you like Talk to do to that, if, show it, films, if, it's food that if it's food you're worried about, focus on that. If, if it's, like in our case, the most pressing thing because of the rise of cost of propane and how cold it gets where we live, uh, we, we have put together a pellet co-op and we have t uh, almost 30 people. And they rushed out to do this, and, you know, because it's where, you know, so it's either where your interest lies or where your pinch is. The need is. Start the with the pinch yes. or start yes. with the, yes. the passion and start doing something and then you know you start getting that energy going you meet other people who are working on it you know some people are getting very excited about gardening and permaculture and they're creating whole permaculture communities and they're supporting each other some people are wanting to simplify and there's all kinds of um, simple living groups uh, simple yeah, living yeah. circles and so being with other people uh, who are sharing this and going through this process I think a lot of folks are doing it on the net too to find out yes. they're not alone yeah. you're not the only one that's worried yes what to, are, I, what do you think about the way the media is handling all this? It seems to me that they are not, they're sort of in their own form of denial. Well, I think there's, particularly with this whole issue of eco-anxiety, it's sort of become a, a buzzword um, in a number of articles that have been written recently. Um, but it's being taken from the point of view, they're sort of they're seeing it as sort of a, a suburban housewife, uh, you know, sort of the uh, new disorder of the day. And I think that's one of the key things that we need to not do. This is not a mental health disorder. This is not an illness, these concerns that we have. People who are feeling depressed or feeling uh, anxious and having a lot of concern about this, uh, even feeling obsessed about it at times. This is, this is not a mental illness, as long as, they, as we can all get and support each other in moving into action. Mm -hmm. uh, this, this is a real, you know, it's like, would somebody say, uh, if I say to them, well, you know, um, there's a tornado possibly coming 
this week or there's a hurricane on the way, uh, we wouldn't say that they have a hurricane it's, disorder. That's <laughs> <laughs> no, you've got, but you've, you've got facts to back that up. And yeah. part of what you're saying here is the media is not perhaps allowing that yeah, there are there, true factual things mm, happening in the world. Yeah, I, I mean, there's sort of a mockery factory. that I see going on in some mm. of these articles. But mockery, you know, is one of the stages of denial. denial. That's one of the ways that we sure. can make, you know, first we deny it that exists, and then we make fun of it, and then we discover then we discover it and claim it as our own. So, I mean, that's what mm. we hope. I, that's why I'm so tickled to be here, because to be in a, a media setting where I know that you know about these things, you know they're happening, uh, and I'm particularly concerned uh, about the helping and therapeutic communities around the country. I feel it's so important that they be educated about this, that they know about this. Ah. Uh, because when people come to them, and also our spiritual communities, you know, when people uh, turn to them for help with these concerns, it's so important that they not say, okay, that's not a problem. I mean, think about the grief process in general. If you lose your husband and you turn to your uh, spiritual advisor or you go to a yeah. therapist, they don't say to you, your husband did not die. <laughs> Or they don't say, it's not a big deal that you lost your husband. Right. And so right. we just can't have uh, the people that we reach out to for help uh, be saying that it's not important or that it doesn't exist or, or even just saying, well, you know, just meditate or, or pray. Praying and meditation is a great way to help us to get ourselves centered again so that we can look at the reality. But when we come back, the reality is still there. That's so right. we really need That's help right. in dealing with the reality too. That's, I'm, I, it's a very good point, is that the therapeutic communities, the healing communities, need to, to, to include this in their view. It isn't just interpersonal relationships, for example, right. not I, just ourselves. I have transferred all of my, uh, or the focus of all of my continuing education courses that I do uh, to this topic because I uh, feel it's so important that helping professionals uh, be awake. Also, you see, if you're not awake, how can you help of someone course. else? If you're not somewhere in this process, and hopefully by at least have dabbled in stage six, how are you going to help other people get there? You know, so I just see that as one of the, the high priorities right now. What advice would you give to people who are saying, I'm just, you know, they're just getting the inkling on waking up, I'm just starting to get this. I mean, how do you help people um, be good to themselves through the process? To know that, I mean, one thing that's helpful to me is to know, I may go back and feel depressed again even though I'm doing something. Mm -hmm. I may start to feel alone. I may get overwhelmed. It may have, you know, that it's, it's not just a clear-cut a, B, C, D, E. Yeah, right. And, and if we're just getting a, 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 the idea that it exists, then we really need to educate ourselves. And we're really fortunate right now with the inconvenient truths and uh, the end of suburbia and uh, what a way to go. There's so many good DVDs out there that, uh, that we can actually uh, invite people over to watch together. I think that these are all much better see, uh, seen in groups. I agree. Totally. Because agree. then you can break up into small groups and you can all discuss uh, your reaction to this, and people will be in different stages. Uh, you know, so this is a good thing communities can do, but we can also put those together for ourselves. We can pull our friends together who we sense have a, a concern, and we can say, as we've done in our community, we've done many showings, and, and we get together and we kind of uh, commiserate with one another and, and help each other in and out of the various stages, like say, oh yeah, I can see where, wow, you know, somebody else is already moving into, you know, say something they're doing with gardening, or, you know, so I think that's a really good way uh, is, is to get together with other people. We are going through this together. This is not a, a so, I mean, this is not solo mental illness. We and we're going to need each other. We're going to because need when each you're other. down, I can maybe be up and hold, help you up, and just yeah. hold you. I don't think that we've ever gone through anything quite like it. I, I, the similarities would be, you know, when the Russian economy collapsed. Uh, they went into a lot of, now they were in, in many ways in better situated than we are because they, virtually no one lost their homes, uh, um, virtually no one ceased to have energy because that was provided uh, throughout neighborhoods through these giant boiler systems. Their transportation system never broke down. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and yet 30 million people died during that shift. So we're facing uh, a huge, huge issues and we're, it, it, it won't be easy, but definitely that's what we're going to need is to help each other through it, to use our ingenuity, not to look for some other ingenuity, you know, the great brilliant scientist who's going to come with this answer, but to use our own ingenuity. What can I do in my house? What can I do in my day? And what can we, I do in my community with other people? You know, like in our community, we formed a group called Let's Live Local 
because clearly it's going to be a lot easier uh, for us to rely on the things that are right around us that I don't have to be shipped for, you know, the 3,000 mile salad yes, yes. kind of thing. And so we formed this group and we've, we assessed uh, what are they most interested in and for them it's food. And so um, we're talking about community garden, we're talking about greenhouses, we're going to try to do a day-long workshop educating people in the different ways they could grow in the mountain communities where we live. Yeah, yeah. The second priority had to do with energy mm. because it's cold where we live, it doesn't terribly get hot as so much as air conditioning, but cold is a big issue. So you know we need to, and we don't have um, enough wind, probably it's going to have to be solar for us, so we have to take a look at how can we do this. Uh, and then the third uh, interest was in transportation because we're relatively remote. Mm -hmm. And I think that's one of the key things, that every community is going to have a different set exactly. of, exactly. of solutions they have to find. Some people live in huge hydroelectric areas where their water is abundant. Other people, you know, live in a desert uh, like Arizona uh, and Southern California for that matter, you know. Uh, which we're just a little bit north of. Uh, and so the issues that they have to face and we have to face as a small mountain village an hour from everywhere and what they're going to face in New York City, for example, where where are they going to grow things? You know, people say the end of suburbia. Well, actually, suburbia has la has lawns, <laughs> so yeah. they might be able to grow some right. things for but themselves there. It's going to be tougher in New York City. What I hear is that mm -hmm. there's a combination of, first of all, in the waking up syndrome, of knowing that there's a pattern the, right. There's yes. some steps that you can, and, and it's normal and it's them. natural. There's nothing right. wrong with you. Right. Yeah. And it's actually a healthy thing. Yeah, it's to a good be thing. Responding because yeah. it means you are waking up to what's really happening. Right. And that moving, and that so so giving cutting you some slack for yourself about the stages you're going through. Yes. Giving yourself that permission. Yeah. Try not oh. to do it alone. Yeah, and cutting slack for the fact that you, you know, you can't be perfectly green. You can't be perfectly anything. And you're going to do what you can do. people slack because yeah. they're going to be at a different stage. They right. may be still in denial while yeah. you're you're waking up and so on. And how do you just just stay patient with them? Right. And finding the things to do that make you feel better because you're doing something that moves towards yeah. your more self-sufficient. Where you can start others. and where you feel good starting. Right. It is, yeah. Right. So in a way, it's an exciting. Um, after you get past certain things, it becomes exciting as well, you know, because we know that we're going to be part of shaping this, and, and we're not going to be the victim of it. These are challenging times, and you've given us some tools to work with in ourselves. Thank you. Thank you It's been my much. pleasure. You're watching Peak Moment, Community Responses for a Changing Energy Future. I'm Jenea Donaldson. My guest is Sarah Edwards. If you value these programs, Please contribute financially. Go to peakmoment.tv and you can also sign up for our email newsletter. Join us next time.